The parable of the Good Shepherd, I think, is one that is very difficult for us as modern leaders to, listeners rather, to fully grasp, or at least it is for me. We hear it and we think we're immediately condemned or justified by our own actions, by whether we're the first one on sight, helping the stranger, the one we do not know, who is having some kind of trouble, or at the very least, really bad day. But I think to fully grasp what is going on in this lesson, in this reading that we've had today, in what's going on in the parable of the Good Shepherd, what Jesus is really trying to say to us here. I think to really understand all that, we need to look at the end of that lesson and see what it is that Jesus tells the man that's questioning him about who his neighbor is according to the law, this lawyer. We need to look at what Jesus is saying to him, which is, at the very end of our lesson today, go and do likewise. But what it is that Jesus is telling this man to do, what it is that he is saying to go and do likewise, it's probably not what we initially thought it was. Because what we see right before what it is that he is called to go and do, we see when Jesus asked this lawyer about the three characters who see this man at the side of the road, when Jesus asked this lawyer about them, which of these three was a neighbor to the man who fell at the hands of robbers? And what it is that the lawyer replies there, what it is that Jesus tells him to go and do, is the lawyer says that the neighbor is the one who showed him mercy. And so that is the action that Jesus is calling him to emulate, to show mercy. And what it means to show mercy is revealed in Jesus' parable and specifically in the roles that these three characters we see have in it. Now the first two, the first two who come by and see this man on the side of the road are a priest and a Levite. And so for this lawyer, a man who has studied the law, who holds it in great regard, these two people are great people. They're exactly the people he wants to emulate. Exactly the kind of people that he would be proud to say are his neighbor. But they're not the ones that do the saving. They're not the ones who stop. Instead, it is a person that is probably the complete opposite of who the lawyer would have suspected would have helped this man. A man that we are told is a Samaritan. Now, in our readings so far, we've encountered Samaritans before. In fact, just a few weeks ago, we saw Jesus and his disciples as they were passing through Samaria. But the people there, the Samaritans, who saw Jesus and his disciples... As they saw them getting ready to go on to Jerusalem, they immediately refused to help them. And so James and John asked Jesus if they can call fire down from heaven to consume them. But Jesus rebukes them for saying so. Now, for us listening to this, this whole scene seems just a little bit odd. First off, why do the Samaritans care about where Jesus and the disciples are going? Why does it matter they're going to Jerusalem? And this is the reason where they're going, that the Samaritans refuse to be hospitable. So it seems understandable that James and John would have a little bit of righteous indignation about that. But Jesus seems okay with what the Samaritans have done. 
And that's because Jesus understands the nuances of this situation. Because the Samaritans were Jews too. It just so happened that back in the day when the Jews were exiled from the land of Israel, the Samaritans were the ones who settled nearby and went on and married Gentiles. And so they're in this state of in-betweenness. And like most people in such a state, they're disliked by everyone. The Gentiles don't like them because they're Jews. And the Jews, specifically those who worship in the the temple in Jerusalem, those Jews look down on them as being in a constant state of uncleanliness. You see, these Samaritans, they're outcast. They're disrespected, disregarded on all sides. So a Samaritan is not the person that the lawyer talking to Jesus would have had any respect for or any inclination that he was capable of any kind of good and just action. And yet it is one of these Samaritans, one of these supposedly unclean people who does exactly what the law prescribes. It is this person that does exactly what a neighbor is supposed to do. This Samaritan looks on the man lying in the road, beaten and left for dead, and chooses not to care who he is. He chooses to overlook the fact that this man could be just as prejudiced against him as anyone else. He looks past the fact that if these situations were reversed, this man might not do the same thing for him. He overlooks any animosity that may be between them. He has mercy. You see, being a neighbor isn't just about helping those you know around you. It's not even just about helping those we dislike. It's about being there for others, even though they might not be there for us. It means being kind to everyone, even those we may dislike, even those we would rather not associate with. And that's what this reading today is calling us to be like. To help those around us who may despise and reject us. To those who may hate us. To those we may hate back. This is a tall order indeed. It's not an easy thing that we're being asked to do. But Jesus isn't asking us to do anything that he is not willing to do himself. Because we as the human race despised and rejected God. We failed to do what he asked us to do. And instead we ran off and worshipped other gods, not even real gods, gods that we made, that we came up with ourselves. But even though we spat in God's face time and time again, God was still there for us. And in spite of all that we had done, he still loved us. In fact, he loved us so much, he was willing to come down and dwell with us, to be in the dirt and the grime with us. And even when we continued to reject him, in spite of all that he had done, in spite of his love for us, he chose to die for us so that that we might live again, regardless 
of anything that we had done. He chose to have mercy for us. And we are called to have that same love for all others around us, even those who despise us, dislike us, hate us. And we are called to do the same for those that we may dislike, the ones who get under our skin, the ones who it seems we can never do anything right for. Being a neighbor means having mercy on others, just as the Samaritan did for the man on the side of the road, and just as Jesus Christ did for us. So, when you encounter someone who needs your help, especially if it is someone you don't want to give the time of day to, or who might not want to give the time of day to you, remember that Jesus did the same thing for us. And so be quick to show for others the love that Christ Jesus showed for you.